Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hi ho everybody, welcome back to D Plus Us Weekly, the weekly show where we talk about shows exclusive to Disney Plus, episode by episode, week by week, for your enjoyment and ours. I'm one of your hosts, Griffin Tanel, Griffin D Pad, and with me as always is the wonderful, the amazing Mr. Mitch George. How's it going today? I'm disappointed. You can't start this like this. I can. Because that is not your camp half blood shirt. That is fair. That is fair. The Camp Half Blood shirt is in the wash. Um, I wore it. Is it because you had it on for the TikTok you recorded a couple days As ago? As a matter of fact, it is. Also because I <laughs> spilled hot sauce on it. That'll do it. <laughs> Chicken wings and Percy Jackson's a hot combo. <laughs> it's a great combination. Yeah. Uh, my reactions to episode one are up on our TikTok. One of my favorite videos I've made, frankly, it's, it's really funny to me. <laughs> Just the pure joy of what the next few weeks is going to entail is me very, very excited for the rest of this season. So I might keep recording them, honestly, because it was kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, we're... episode two. I'll just... Uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, I was going to say, I could re-record it, but I'm like, no, I can't recreate my reaction. It's worth watching it again, to be I can't honest. Re I can't recreate my reaction to some of the oh shit moments in episode two. Oh yeah uh we'll get to all we'll of get that, to that though folks rear and roll first first stuff hey thanks for listening thanks for tuning in this is the weekly show we have a normal show there we go our last episode was on the dog shit Percy jackson movie uh you can go check that out right now over on our youtube channel or don't youtube.com slash at d plus us where you can see me be very yourself. very angry <laughs> um will griffin be as angry tonight we no. shall see let me just answer it now. Oh. No. Um, I'm trying to tease this out. If people are now listening to just, this. Now they're all just going to turn the damn thing off. Like, what the heck? Mitch, if people are listening to this, they're already listening. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah, we got all this stuff going on. We do have the TikTok where we will be putting stuff up fairly consistently from now on, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Assuming the world doesn't catch on fire for me again. It probably will. But yeah, our current show we'll, for the moment we'll is Percy Jackson anyway. the Olympian Season 1. We are talking about the first two episodes today. Uh, quickly brings up Table of Contents. Episode 1, I accidentally vaporize my pre-algebra teacher. And Episode 2, I become Supreme Lord of the Bathroom. Fantastic, because they are both chapters in the actual book. I assume we're going to be getting this naming convention for the rest of the show. Well, do you want to open up that Table of Contents? I'll give you the names of the rest of the episodes. I'm, can I guess? Can we make this a guessing yes. game? Yes, let's do it. There are eight episodes okay. total, so you've got six more to guess. So the next one is definitely um, going to be Medusa. So I assume yeah. it would be we visit, was the, we visit the Garden Gnome Emporium. That is the title of episode three, correct. Next one, probably either I plunge to my death or I become a noon fugitive. It is, in fact, I plunge to my death. After that, oh, it's a 50-50 shot in the next one. It's, I, I think it would probably be it. We Take a Zebra to Vegas. It might be a God Buys Us Cheeseburgers. That, those are the titles of episode five and six Nailed in it. the reverse order. So Cheeseburgers, then Zebra. And then the last one presumably is uh, the There prophecy. are two more. Oh, the la there's two there more. There are two, two more. more. Um, two more. We find out the truth, sort of. Episode seven. And then the prophecy comes true. Episode eight. I'm just good at this. I'm just really damn good at Nailed this. Nailed it. Also, what knowing this book it, very well, it's very easy to know what the key plot points are. That is also <laughs> very true. But also looking at this, the finale of the season comes out on my birthday, and that's kind of appropriate. Yeah, that's great for you. Yeah. Hey, it's the season of Aquarius, man. What can I say? You gotta love it. Now, obviously, folks, uh, we love the show here. Uh, the show is fantastic. The show is wild. Let me hit you all Let's hope the it last keeps it up. little bit of rigmarole. Uh, we aren't going plot by plot points. But uh, we're going to be pretty heavy spoilers. So if you haven't watched the episodes one or two, come on back. We'll talk about it going forward. It will be one episode per show. But since it was a two episode premiere, it's kind of just easier to do it this way. We couldn't hold Griffin back. Trust me, I tried. We went to HR. HR said Griffin gets what he wants because it's his show. I was and say, I HR had nothing to say because HR is also Griffin. So. I was say, HR is me in our very official uh. two-person setup here we have. Exactly, exactly. We have guests occasionally. Come on. Okay, fair enough. Let's talk about Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Let's do it. 
Dude, that opening. The oh, fact so it doesn't good. open with the Disney Plus splash screen and it just opens on the narration that is the opening of the book. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is the thing. This is going to be the thing. I mean, and we got bits and pieces of it, of like that opening monologue from the book, right? Like we got that in the yeah. trailer and we all knew like it had to start that way. But yeah. like they, they nail it. They nail everything about it. Yancey Academy. There's like one thing I wish that they had done. Um, but like other than that, I am all in on this. I love that. I love how they use Miss Dodds. I love Grover and like the betrayal of Grover to realize oh, it wasn't yeah. actually the badass that is Sally Jackson yeah. finally getting her fucking due in film. Still think it's kind of weird her sitting out in the rain. Like I thought this in the book too. Like her sitting out in the rain. I get it, but it's also just like it's kind of needy. Or at least it comes across the way. I mean, I like as the character develops, it it doesn't it very much doesn't become that way. But just like at face value, the fact I haven't read this book in like a decade, it was like, oh, this is kind of weird. I get it. Just knowing where the character's going, but like still weird. See, I like her sitting out in the rain uh, when she's first introduced. Also, her just like her listings of Olivia Rodrigo is fantastic. Um, oh, it, it tracks for sure. But like I think that is like her her moment to like kind of connect back with Poseidon. Which is the thing that's like, obviously, you aren't necessarily told that right off the bat. We're not told, actually, that he's the son of Poseidon until the end of episode two, which is fantastic. Perfectly done. Which is, I, I as soon as I'm watching that scene, I'm like, I text her. I'm like, the reveal gave me goosebumps. Like, this show is nailing so it. So good. I oh, love my God. What they're doing, like, we got Nancy Boba Fett. We got Clarice. We got Mr. Fucking Clarice D. Is per- Clarice is perfect. Mr. D. Holy shit. I, I like, said since day one perfect. that that is the best casting. Um, and I Jason Manzukis when he's doing the whole, oh, just go get me this thing. Yeah, I'm your father. It's so good. <laughs> like, it's up. perfect. But Absolute yeah, so the, the one thing I don't love from the first episode is I wish we got a little bit more of Percy in school. Yeah, and, like I wish we'd seen a little bit more of that, particularly with like how much he loves Mr. Brunner's class. And yeah, like, like his, talking about Latin and all he does that, try and, just and whatnot. Um, digging more into the ADD, digging more into the dyslexia, mm-hmm. and which obviously I, I, I imagine get, they're going to get to. But well, I, I I get why they skip over it because it's not one of the interesting parts of the book. Uh, it is something yeah. that's very much like let's just set up some character development, uh, particularly for Chiron, who is overall a side character at best. Um, I do think this epi- like. The thing that the movie did that this does better is it understands the medium in a way that, like, yes, you and I as fans of the, the books understand that level of detail, understand, like, more of the character development you get in book because you're not as constrained. Like, you can take your time with a book. It's a it's a more passive, like, experience. It's not you sit down and watch the entirety of this thing and it's over. Like, there isn't a... Everyone can approach it differently, but an episode of television is an episode of television. And I think the pacing here is honestly what really nailed it for me of, yes, it didn't hit everything beat for beat like it did in the book, but from where the characters need to be at the start of the episode to the end of the episode, it just looking at episode, yeah. I mean, episode one and two, like, I think they were very well paced for the amount of content it gets that we got here to hit the same that we didn't get in the movie. Beats too. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, one of my favorite things about one of these episodes is that Grover goes and sees the Cloven Council, um, which is just nowhere to be seen in the movie, which is not surprising. The Cloven Council is a very specific thing. But, like, they're not there very long because they don't very, really need to be. They, Presuming we get more seasons of this, they will become a bigger deal the further we go. Yep. But, like, little things like that, seeing Talia's tree, getting a fucking D'Angelo, Nico D'Angelo reference in this. Like, there's all of these tiny little details for the fans that like we love and other stuff like Marvel and whatnot. And it's done very, very well and sets up the world fantastically. Actually getting all of the cabins by each other in the U shape. Spectacular. Seeing Camp Half Blood just in general actually be a summer camp. Actually be No, these are all kids. These are all kids in their brightly colored uh summer camp. Orange t shirts. T shirts. Yeah. And then when and it like, comes time about, for capture the flag, they all suit up. They're ready to go. And just like, how good is Luke? Like I, that was I'm one of those ready. casting tours. Like I, I didn't really 
mind much to like because all of these kids for the most part i'm not familiar with them i know um the actor behind percy was in that film with mm-hmm. ryan reynolds on netflix a new years ago or a few years ago the adam project but like other than him they're relatively unknown i'm like oh i'm popping off for all of the casting for like the gods and the adults but like these kids these kids are nailing it like the kids are perfect. annabeth is perfect per- percy's a dick in the best way grover is like the actor, I, I wish I had the cast up in front of me, and I probably should have done that before we started recording, but I was too excited to start talking and <laughs> wanted to do it before I crashed. Um, I mean, Walker yeah, Scoble like, Walker. is Percy, but... Uh, yeah, like yeah. he's, I, I said it in my react, my reaction, but he is a little, Percy is a fucking menace. Yeah, which uh, is what he's supposed to be. Like, it's why there's a chapter called, I Become a Known Fugitive. Mm-hmm. Like he is a so, menace in the best way. And Grover absolutely enables him. And I cannot wait to watch it all happen. Like that. So Charlie kids Bush. It. Yeah. So going back. So Charlie Bushnell is the name of the actor who's playing Luke. And he hasn't done much before this. He was in diary of, of a future president, another Disney plus show, which we never talked about because I don't think either of us watched it. I don't think either of us cared. Yeah. But he's, he's yeah. so good in this like mentor role and, it's it, it Luke feels, is actually Luke. <laughs> it feels authentic. Whereas the Luke in the movie, you kind of know from the beginning, he's going to be a bit of a pompous ass. Mm-hmm. Whereas this Luke is actually Luke. He makes you feel for him. Like he adds character depth to Annabeth that we did not get in the film. Yeah. It's, like Luke, it, like we get a little bit of the story of Luke, Talia and Annabeth the backstory there, yeah. away. And we get the we Talia get that, story. Talia is actually going to be a part of this. Even if yeah. she isn't physically a part of it, she's so important to both Annabeth and Grover, which That's means future seasons, baby. Get it. Especially, you said one of the episodes was "I took a zebra to." Uh, I took a zebra. I took a zebra to Vegas. I, I wrote, "Yeah, I take a zebra to Vegas." Okay, that means we'll get the scene of them probably conversing about Talia, explaining all of that. Oh, it has be... like they've already they've already teased Talia. Like it's gonna happen. That conversation yeah. has to happen. Like, I am super excited to see what comes next from this because of those kids. Those kids do such yeah. a good job. Percy is so perfectly Percy from down to Lots his of... moments of, like, fighting Gabe and, frankly, winning yeah. to him with with uh, Mr. Brunner before he knows he's Kyron of, like, talk to me. I, I don't think you'll ever understand this shit. Down to like him flossing in the forest, which is the thing everyone kept would, bringing up, but it was so funny. What a kid! It's so Percy of just like I'm bored. Like he's got ADD, right? Like he's gonna do random shit while he's off in his own head without a care in the world because he doesn't know what's going on. No one gave him the context, and then he gets his ass kicked. And Annabeth was there to watch the whole thing because she is this master planner, and it comes across perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like it is, this is the Percy Jackson that we wanted. 13 years ago and didn't, didn't get. So I think it is perfect. this is definitely a redemption project for, for Rick Riordan. And it's, it's fucking nailing it so far, dude. Yeah. I, I hate bringing up the series because I have such a disdain for it now, but I really hope they do the Harry Potter thing with this, where I hope that they see how much people are loving this first season and they just commit. You, They've you, already like Rick, Rick has already said like he's planned out the five seasons of this show like they have the plan to adapt the entire first series into five seasons of this show which I just seeing these uh, knowing grow, Disney like, and knowing their weird ass decisions I that's why I'm worried about it I hope that they just commit they do it all they accept it and they're like hey good or not good or not good re- a good response or not we have something special here. Yeah, they got to do commit. it. This is this is their Harry Potter, mm-hmm. which I know is saying a lot. But you look at what Warner Brothers is doing right now. They've announced a reboot of that series for HBO Max as a series, which I think is the right approach for these novelizations that have a lot of character depth that get lost in film. I know that film franchise did really well. It was one of the most profitable franchises in the world. You know, horrible, bigoted views of creator notwithstanding. Disney has something very similar here with Percy Jackson. And if they can capitalize on this, on the young adult nature of it, I mean, and beating Harry Potter to the punch, this could be as big as that show will the be. The argument has been made for years about whether who's like, is it Percy Jackson or is it Harry Potter? Like, which is the one you grew up with and whatnot? And like me being a Percy Jackson kid and loving all of this, having also been a Harry Potter kid and seeing it's Harry Potter without the baggage at this point. 
It is that level yeah. of depth. As it far was... as we as far as we know, we we don't like you don't know everything about everyone. Something could come out tomorrow about someone involved with this book being a white supremacist or something really Except terrible. Except that we know significantly more about Reardon than we ever that we ever will about J.K. Rowling. Just for also we'll also very true. But yeah, it is it is it is Harry Potter without the baggage, and I feel confident saying that. Which, frankly, I just don't when it comes to most celebrity these days. Like, I really do think Percy Jackson has the opportunity here to become one of the biggest things Disney has put is putting out right now. It is a must-watch show on Disney+, Plus, regardless of if you are a Percy Jackson fan or not. I genuinely you think have this is the best kids, thing on Disney+. Plus. If you have kids, if you have young adults in your life... You would be doing them a disservice by not telling them this exists. If you're listening to us, make sure everyone in your life knows this is worth watching. I've already been screaming it from the rooftops. We've already got at least one other person who has watched episode one because of what we have told them. So that's progress. One is the start. So the holidays are coming around. You're going to have a few episodes out by the time you get to your holiday celebrations this year. Let everyone in your family know this needs to be watched because it's really good. And what I love about Percy Jackson as a property over something like Harry Potter, again, I was the right age group that I grew up with Harry Potter. Maybe I was a little late to Percy Jackson, but I still read at least that first series. And I think that I read the first of the sequel series. Um, but that being said, I think that like the... The mythical nature of this and some just some of the the idea of reading into Greek mythology and Greek mythos, I think, is really fun to explore here through a property like this that is targeted at young adults. And it's a way to actually get people interested in history and in mythology. And in like you, you look at some of the great philosophers out of Greece and like this led me down a rabbit hole as a kid of like exploring Greek mythology and then just Greek history and and getting into things like the Odyssey and stuff like that, like um, Jason and the Argonauts, those kinds of stories. It's really, really cool to see something like this come back now as an adult. We're like, now I have the ability to influence a whole bunch of younger people around me. Like this is worth watching. It's really fucking cool. And there's a lot of really interesting things you can learn from this, which I don't feel like we get enough of on TV with, uh, you know, Marvel this and, Star Wars that and I love those things, but like this is something that has actual basis in like you could study this shit if you wanted to. And that's cool. Mm-hmm. So I just find it funny that you chose Jason and the Argonauts as your reference, considering Jason and the Argonauts does play a role in Heroes of the Olympus. Heroes of Look, the Olympus. Look, the reason I went to Jason and the Argonauts, and this is not um no word of a lie, the reason that that comes to my my, my mind as a um Greek story, and I need to confirm part of this. Uh, because I, I believe it to be fact. Um, uh, God damn it! You're doing great. Keep it up. Too much typing. So okay, I knew the first part. I wanted to confirm the second part before I said it. Do you know what the name? So we've got this little sports ball league up here in Canada called the Canadian Football League which is essentially the NFL, but much smaller, has a different, slightly different set of rules. It's pretty entertaining football. Only three downs, which is weird, but you get used to it. Do you know what the Toronto team is, Griffin? The Look, Toronto CFL team? I'm going to guess the It Argonauts. is the Toronto, the Toronto Argonauts, yes. Do you want to guess, you want to fathom a guess at who their mascot is? I have zero idea. It is Jason the Argonaut. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's great. Sense. I love it. Now, I, I'm not I, a fan of the CFL, but like that's the reason that that sticks in my brain is just the Toronto connection. To be honest, fair enough. I I do think that this is something special. Like we've we've said that about a lot of things and have been very wrong. Like I do think that there's a level of specialness to a lot of the things we've watched. Um, this is something entirely different. Though. This is something that the world should see. Um, I right really hope bat, we start we have... getting some, yeah, like I hope we start getting some feedback that like people are watching it. I think having it at the top of the splash screen of Disney Plus going to the holidays, you gotta hope, especially since now we've got What If dropping in like four hours or seven I know, hours, like my, it is. I know like my TikTok is like practically tailored to it, but like I'm seeing so much reception to this, to this. They are seeing a ton of reception to it on Twitter. Um, when that for some reason my TikTok works. today became a whole. 
My TikTok today became this one guy that just would go into restaurants and buy an exorbitant amount of food to feed the homeless. Oh, yeah, I've seen that guy. That guy, that guy, that guy is dope. It's great. It's heartwarming, especially this time of year. But I'm like, why is it that my TikTok went to that? It was espresso videos for the longest time as a guy who barely drinks coffee. And now it's this guy, which I'm not mad know. at. It's just TikTok's weird, man. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a weird algorithm that I want to figure out every day. But yeah, Percy Jackson, fantastic. <laughs> Highly recommend Go it. it. Go watch it. Everything about it is 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 it's perfect uh a couple of things little things i want to shout out just as a nerd uh hey i saw those hero cards um why can't i not remember the name of the game the hero um the cards that uh grover was showing percy at the beginning of episode one i i kind of watched all this as i was falling asleep i gotta go watch them again quickly brings up book to check it's hero something i know that much um yeah it doesn't matter uh give us those cards those cards clearly are already made they're fantastic they're like a major part of the book i mean uh, they were made as a prop for the show like so well, like they would be one copy well what i'm saying is they have the art made which means it's not hard to just standardize them and print them um give us that give us the new camp half t-shirt i will buy it i was gonna say is it not already up on shop disney <laughs> i'm not buying it off shop disney um, I'm checking. I'm checking. You keep going. You keep going. But those are the two big ones there. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is Chiron, just in general. Um, sorry, I'm seeing if the Camp Half Blood, new Camp Half Blood version is on. Oh, yeah, it's already on Amazon. Um, yeah, I don't see anything on uh, on Shop Disney yet. But yeah, I want to talk about Chiron because Chiron is so well done in this. Um, he is a mentor role. I hope before. Before we uh, they leave uh, Camp Half Blood, because they will be leaving camp next episode. I yeah. do hope we see the Oracle. Um, I'm not sure we will. Uh, considering it's a little hard to just you know pop up to the attic to show off the dead person, but it would be interesting to see. I don't know if they have to show it as part of the show. I do think like. Um, going back to the list of episodes, like the last two episodes being titled, we find out the truth sort of, and the prophecy comes true. They need to be aware of the prophecy, whether that's from the Oracle or from some other mechanism. So like if the conversation is going to happen, whether or not the easy Oracle directly is yet to be seen. I think there's yeah, other ways I, they could do it to speed the plot up if they wanted to, but well, I think it's the something Oracle, they have to talk about. I think the Oracle speeds it up a lot already. Yeah, um, that's true. And I do think, I think it's pretty important for what they're going to be doing. So I hope they show it because it's also because we'll there is that level of distrust because of the prophecy that they have throughout the entire first book, which I think could be something very interesting for them to play with. But that's all next week, which we will get to next week. Oh, heck yeah. Mitch, if people want to keep up with us, where can people find us? All of our crazy takes are over on Twitter and X and TikTok at D plus us shows can be found at D plus us on YouTube, your favorite podcast service of choice. Just go hit at D plus us a great holiday gift to the both of us. If you are on YouTube or any of those podcast services, five stars, like subscribe, share with your friends and family over the holidays. Let them know how much they need to watch this show. It would mean the world to us. Yeah, Best please. gift you can give us. Please check out our stuff. Let us know what you think and let us know what you want us to talk about. There's always something to talk about on that streaming service, so we will be happy to do it. We will see y'all in the next episode, but until then, have a magical day.